A seven year old girl rushed to the hospital in critical condition after shots are fired in an east side neighborhood. Good to have you with us at 11. The search is now underway for the shooter. There's still a heavy police presence in the area where she was shot. Tim Pamplin is on the scene with the night cam. Tim. We're just arriving on the scene here, Bedford and Bremen. You see an evidence marker, a bullet casing down on the Bedford Street there. Here's what we're hearing. This is Bedford and Bremen, outer drive Mac area, Detroit Seaside. A young girl, seven years old, was sitting in her home down here on Bedford on a couch when bullets started coming through the walls. One of them struck her in the back of the head. When police arrived, they, they knew they couldn't wait for medics. They got her in the back of a scout car, got her to the hospital where she's currently in surgery, listed in critical condition. All police have right now is that a blue car was seen speeding down Bedford and started opening fire into the home here. Police are out looking for that vehicle tonight. If you have any information, give police a call. But again, a seven year old girl sitting in her home shot in the back of the head by a drive by shooter. That's the scene on the east side with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. All right, Tim, it was an emotional evening in Melvindale where a popular young man was remembered a day after passing away. The family of 18 year old Austin Tanner says he had COVID but recovered, was recovering at home when things took a turn for the worst yesterday. Jason Colthorpe live at Melvindale High School tonight with Tanner's story. Jason. Kim, the vigil was actually supposed to be here at the high school at The Rock, but Tanner's family or uh, Austin's family can't leave their home right now because of COVID concerns. So they took the vigil to their front steps. It's been a long day. We are super, super touched by each and every one of you showing up here. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. He was awesome. He is the most loving and caring person that I've ever met in my entire life. Austin Tanner was the kind of young man who stood out. He was the kind of kid who seemed like he loved everything and everybody. We moved here when I was in the ninth grade and I didn't know anybody and he was one of the first people that I met and the first thing he did was give me a big hug and tell me that I was going to love it here, that it was going to be awesome and that me and him were going to be good friends. And everybody seemed to love him. Just listen to when they announced the 2020 MHS homecoming king. Homecoming king, Mr. Austin Tanner. That's why it was scary when Austin got sick a couple weeks ago, and even scarier when his COVID test came back positive last Friday. After signs of improvement, suddenly on Tuesday, the 18 year old was having trouble breathing, and then he collapsed at his home. His family says he went into cardiac arrest. And he's right here. He's right here watching us. Tonight, friends and family remembered him for his faith, his laugh. He's probably up there with his little giggle <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? And his effect on all of them. Only thing we need now is some cold play playing or something. You know? what in the world is going to do? He was just a really wonderful person. Look up what it is and it's really sad to see him, to see that he's gone. Bible says that we are to be the light to the world. Austin was. He was. He was a light to the world, and um, you know we're going to miss him a lot. They played a lot of his favorite songs out there tonight. Uh, Austin did have autism, but he certainly didn't let it define him. He was an aspiring graphic artist, had taken classes at Wayne State to chase that dream. And the outpouring is what you would expect on social media. And I want to point out his final Facebook post, which was from five days ago, talking about his symptoms, how bad he was feeling and asking for prayers. And he wrote in all caps, COVID is no joke. And again, he's he was just 18. We're in Melvindale tonight. Jason Colthorpe, local four. But had such an impact on so many people at such a young age. Sounds like he really will be missed. Jason, we appreciate it. Well, today the state reporting 3,271 new cases of COVID-19 over the past 24 hours. 18 more people have died from the virus in Michigan. And tonight's headlines, new restrictions issued on gatherings in East Lansing with more than 10 people allowed at any outdoor gathering. It comes just days ahead of Saturday's Michigan, Michigan State football game. Regeneron Pharmaceuticals announcing tonight its coronavirus antibody cocktail significantly reduces the need for further medical care in a trial of nearly 800 patients. That's the same experimental treatment President Trump received when he was diagnosed with COVID. 
Battleground Michigan means the presidential campaigns are blitzing the state this week and it continued this evening. Tonight, Vice President Mike Pence was in Flint. That's where Mara McDonald joins us with many more campaign events still to come before Tuesday. Mara. You know, we are at a point in this election season in this state that if the day ends in Y, you're going to have a presidential campaign rally happening here, which really tells you everything you need to know about what those campaign internal polls look like. Air Force Two requesting permission to land. Air Force Two, Flint Tower, clear to land. The roar of Air Force Two as it landed at Flint Bishop Airport. A crowd of several hundred waited three hours or more to see the vice president tonight. I asked why it was worth standing in line. I mean, my sons are working and I think that's the best thing, the economy. Not to mention your morals. And stuff like that. My sons have jobs and that's the most important thing. The economy figuring for a large portion of the vice president's remarks. We revived our economy. We secured our border, supported law enforcement, and stood for life and liberty in the Constitution of the United States. Pence is a very focused speaker. He lands his talking points with precision, unlike the president, whose rally remarks tend to be far more freestyle. The elites on the East Coast and on the left coast often talked about our part of the country as the Rust Belt. And there was a fair amount of rust on it when they were in charge. Clearly, both of these campaigns believe this state is up for grabs, and they're pouring both money and time in here by the bucketful. Our polling suggests those who will be voting for the Trump-Pence ticket think the administration's COVID response has been acceptable. Now, the VP did not address the increase in COVID cases, but did talk vaccine. We started at, at record speed to develop medicines, therapeutics that are saving lives today. And before the end of this year, we believe we will have tens of millions of doses of the first coronavirus vaccine in the world. It is now a mad scramble for those election day voters. Expect the intensity of these campaigns to increase. We're in Flint. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, tomorrow the president's son, Eric Trump, will be making a campaign stop in Lansing. His youngest daughter, Tiffany, will be in Birmingham. The president will be returning to Michigan on Friday. That will be with a visit to Waterford. Over on the Democratic side, Joe Biden's wife, Dr. Jill Biden, will be back in Michigan. She'll be in Lansing and Westland tomorrow. And on Halloween, Saturday, former President Barack Obama will appear with Joe Biden here in Michigan, their first event together this election season. Today, Governor Whitmer spoke out against potential voter intimidation and says any attempt at misinformation aimed at voters will not be tolerated. Unfortunately, I think we see um, efforts to undermine what has always been a system that has worked and has uh, worked very well and has had integrity. I'm not going to postulate right now on why that those efforts are being made, but they're just wrong. They are unsupported. They are incorrect and not based in fact at all. About two and a half million Michiganders have already voted either in person at clerk's offices or by absentee ballot. A Warren City Councilman is facing charges for allegedly handcuffing a woman he said was tampering with a campaign sign. Eddie Kabazinski was under investigation for his alleged actions during a Trump rally in East Point on October 14th. A 24-year-old woman says Kabazinski chased her down and handcuffed her after she stuck Black Lives Matter stickers on a Trump sign. He's now charged with impersonating a public officer and assault. Kabazinski is expected to be arraigned tomorrow. Two men at the center of a voting robocall scam in Detroit and other cities have been ordered to call back their victims. U.S. District Court in New York ordered Jack Berkman and Jacob Wall to make the follow-up calls by 5 p.m. tomorrow. And the calls must inform victims that the message they received regarding mail-in voting was illegal and that it contained false information. Both men face voter intimidation and bribery charges both in Detroit and Cleveland. Still ahead, a family celebrating tonight after being reunited with their dog who was stolen six years ago. And we legit thought he was like gone. The 1,000 mile journey to get him back to his family coming up. Let's check in with Ben. A little bit. Uh, Yokiero Sunshine, we did today, we got it, and it looks like tomorrow we've got to give it up. Sh uh, clouds and more rain headed in our direction. I'll tell you how much coming up.
All right, Ben, but first, was the plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer a serious threat, or was it just a lot of talk and, and no action, as their lawyers claim? What do voters believe? We've got the results of our exclusive poll next.